Hello everyone. Uh, let's start with the fourth week of uh, lecture on development economics and today uh, we will talk about uh, social safety nets. Um, that is, uh, uh, um, it's a very popular uh, prevalent policy in many developing countries including in India and uh, we would like to sort of discuss today its various issues associated with uh, social safety net policies and uh, uh, its sort of pros and cons, uh, benefit cost, risk, etc. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Um, so what are social safety net policies? So these are policies that provide subsidized food support uh, to the needy households. Um, so basically it's a, it's a, it's a safety net uh, for, the, for the disadvantaged section of the society. And it's a safety net, especially in the form of uh, 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 food primarily. Now, either this food is delivered through food distribution centers that the government sets up in various parts of the country to facilitate the, the, the uh, uh, supply of the food or uh, given through food vouchers. Okay. Uh, what are food vouchers? Food vouchers are basically tokens uh, which you can encash it at any uh, grocery store in exchange for certain items which are listed by the government, so you know, certain food items. Uh, so for example, uh, in the Indian context, uh, we have a food distribution system uh, which is called the public distribution system or PDS um, that delivers uh, food at a highly subsidized rate uh, um, to, to uh, uh, people in both rural and urban so uh, uh, across the country both in villages as well as in towns there are pds shops or what are also called fair price shops uh, which basically give out uh, um, these sort of subsidized food primarily grain but also in some cases uh, sugar or uh, in some states uh, kerosene it used to be uh, a few years ago uh, at subsidized rate uh, to, to people who carry a, a, a ration card, right? So you have to be registered under the system. Uh, so so you have to carry a ration card. So basically, uh, then you are entitled to certain amount of food depending on the household size uh, uh, and, and at, at a highly subsidized rate. Okay. So basically, it's a, it's a it's a redistributive program in the sense that these people are getting access to uh, food grains um, at a much cheaper price. So, so basically their real income is high because they have to pay a much lower price for at least certain amount of food that they can get uh, from, from the PDS shops uh, and, and that sort of uh, intended uh, as, a, as, a, as a way of safety to ensure food safety. Okay. Um, in United States, for example, there are no PDS shops, but there are food vouchers, uh, which are given out to uh, poorer sections of the society who can uh, encash it in, in local grocery stores. Uh, the number of uh, developing countries that currently has uh, a subsidy, uh, this kind of uh, social safety net programs, uh, is 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 uh, growing over time. It has nearly doubled in the in the uh, past two decades so so its popularity is growing over time because it's seen as sort of a, an important uh, uh, responsibility of the state uh, to ensure that everybody uh, in, uh, within the, within their country has access to, to, to the basic essential food items and uh, uh, studies by world bank show uh, that about 2 billion people in developing countries today receive uh, social safety net benefits. Okay? So that's a, that's a sizable number. And about a quarter of the poor's income or consumption come from these benefits. So, you know, even if you sort of think about the magnitude of, of this transfer, it's sizable for the, for the people who indeed access this transfer. So it's about a quarter of the expenditure, uh, consumption expenditure. Of and, and some estimates suggest that it helped 36% uh, uh, of the poorest in the world to escape poverty. So, so you know, it's, a, it's a fairly important program prevalent in many developing countries and, and, and uh, of sizable nature in, 
terms of the actual transfer of money uh, and potential sources. So it's, a, it's an important policy to, to uh, sort of analyze and, and understand. Um, the first set of issues that, uh, you know, we're, we're going to talk about sort of three kinds of issues. The first set of issues is with regard to uh, implementation uh, uh, problems. So, for example, in many countries, including in India, one issue that sort of this implementation issue that, that, that comes up uh, fairly regularly in the, in the media, uh, which sort of highlights that uh, this kind of, uh, of public distribution system um, is very leaky in the sense that there are a lot of corruption and inefficiencies uh, in the system. So, for example, in the context of India, um, the, the way it operates is that the Food Corporation of India, which is sort of a centralized body, uh, a public body that, that procures grains uh, uh, from, from farmers, um, it then part of the grain it retains as a buffer stock and the other part it releases every year. Uh, uh, through a sort of uh, a network uh, um, and various tiers in the network and finally sort of at the edge of this network are these fair price shops or the PDS shops. Uh, it, it sort of from the food corporation of India go down sort of uh, warehouses uh, through various kind of sub centers it reaches the final uh, food corp uh, sorry the fair price shops from which uh, uh, the, the sort of uh, consumers or, or, or the people who have ration funds can go and access them and buy and get, get, get the grains. And so this whole delivery mechanism, people find that it's it's often leaky and, and it leads to a lot of leakage. Not all the grain, of course, reaches the, the final consumer. There is a pilferage of these grains on the during the transport uh, uh, and, and a lot of people make money on the way, right? Because they sell these grains, divert these grains during the transportation process and they sell it in the open market and, and money. right so 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 that sort of is the is the main issue in response to that at least in the Indian context many states have tried to revamp their PDS systems right so so for, for example they have introduced various modernization tools uh, such as uh, tracking of trucks uh, uh, digitization of uh, offtake of grain from various uh, go downs and, and arrival of grains in, in the sort of subsequent uh, sub-centers etc to sort of check and monitor uh, uh, and track the, the, the sort of uh, these grains in, in every process, in every step in the delivery process and so, so that has sort of improved over time the delivery mechanism quite a bit but the, the experiences are quite different across various states. So, so for example, uh, the, the 2013 paper by Jean Dres and uh, Ritika Khera point out, uh, for example, in the table you see uh, that uh, these experiences are very different, for example, for Chhattisgarh and Bihar, right? So, uh, 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 for for uh, the state of Chhattisgarh, uh, 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 you see that the if you look at the poverty gap index, the poverty gap index uh, would, uh, falls by about 40% uh, on because of because of delivery of, of, of uh, this PDS grain, so so they actually use uh, NSS surveys from 2009 and 10, and they look at how much grain are consumed by uh, people uh, from from the PDS, and and they and they compute how much uh, uh, poor they would be had they had to consume this amount of grain from the from using the market price, right? And, and so, so they compute that uh, the, the poverty rate would have been higher by 17% and poverty gap index, uh, uh, which is the sort of depth of poverty, uh, that would have been increased by 40% in absence of, uh, in absence of uh, uh, PDS. But they run the same numbers for Bihar and they find very small percentage. So basically that tells you that these experiences can be quite different across states and and Chhattisgarh is sort of one example in India for where they have implemented the PDS uh, reforms pretty well so the PDS is more you know, quite well functioning in that state so therefore uh, uh, you, you see it, it, it's effectively to be quite large uh, so this is sort of similar to the kind of findings we had in, under for the Narega where we had this idea of star states and non-star states 
and in the star states you, you found that Narega had this uh, sort of uh, positive outcomes in terms of reducing poverty, increasing consumption, etc. Uh, you know, you could sort of presumably do a similar exercise here where you could sort of identify these quote unquote star states with respect to PDS and see whether, you know, how much poverty would fall in absence of PDS in those states versus in the non star states. So, so it tells you that you know context is important you know the the implementation details matter uh, and and if if states can implement this program well then it can have substantial impact on uh, on so that's sort of you know the sort of the, the implementation issues one related issue what sort of an implication of the uh, uh, this whole um, leakage inefficiency with PDS um, is is often uh, uh, comes up uh, no, uh, with this response uh, from the critics that um, you know why not just uh, deliver cash why go through this whole uh, uh, system of procurement and delivery of food grains which is leaky lots of bureaucracy uh, uh, you know why why do that uh, just get rid of this whole system and just why don't we just give equivalent cash amounts uh, um, to the households okay? and now we sort of you know we have this system of biometric identification through Aadhaar um, and, and bank accounts getting linked to uh, to Aadhaar numbers uh, it's possible for the central government to centrally administer uh, direct cash transfers to, to millions of households across the country okay? so, so so, sort of IT uh, along with uh, cash can be a solution to or a substitute to this kind of whole PDS system that we have. So, that's sort of one uh, kind of alternative that is often uh, uh, this the, the PDS is pitted against. And even if we if you sort of remember the basic micro uh, uh, um, insight that you know cash should be better, right? Because uh, uh, if you if you somebody if somebody gives you an in kind transfer, uh, if instead if you get cash of the same amount equivalent amount, um, then you can you have the option as a consumer to spend it on on the in kind good that sort of uh, the state was intended you to spend on, but you have the choice to spend on other stuff as well, right? So so you are you are you know as a state the state is not being sort of paternalistic here. Uh, in terms of cash, uh, it's, it's giving uh, agency to individuals to use the cash in whatever way uh, they want, right? So, so it's not you know the state is is less paternalistic. It's giving more choice to consumers, and and since they have choice, you know the, it, it, the consumers are should be better off because they could always spend the money on on the on the uh, food grains if they really uh, think that's what they need. Right, so so that's sort of, sort of that's the the other argument apart from the inefficiency argument that it, you know, from the micro analysis sense it also makes sense, uh, but then uh, the the sort of um, defenders of this kind of PDS system point out that uh, the the it's the reason why developing countries may need in kind transfers is because uh, food safety is an important consideration and often. Uh, it's the responsibility of the state to ensure that nobody goes hungry and nobody dies of hunger, uh, 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 and and therefore, uh, 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 you know, it's it's not enough to to uh, just transfer cash. You have to ensure that uh, that everybody has access to the essential food item for survival, and and therefore, in kind transfer by forcing people to sort of uh, access grains uh, um, ensures that. That everybody has access to, and and these kind of concerns get heightened with respect to uh, children within households because you know money you can only send to adults, and and even then it depends on whether the money is given to the male members of the household or the female members of the household because it may have implications for what por portion of that uh, cash gets spent on food and especially what uh, how much of the cash gets spent on on, on the welfare of the children. Uh, as opposed to that, if you get in-kind transfer, then then you know, the fungibility of money gets issue is taken care of. So so sort of you can you, you ensure food safety for both adults and kids. 
So, so that sort of is the is the standard defense against uh, a cash transfer. Um, so, you know, the researchers uh, have tried to look into this issue uh, in in various countries, and 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 uh, there is one paper that uh, I borrow from in the subsequent discussion that tries to sort of summarize some of these findings uh, across uh, various developments. So the paper um, that I'm going to uh, refer to is by Gentilini in 2015, revisiting the cash versus food debate. Um, so what he does is, is that he reviews a series of papers that tries to uh, um, uh, that try to estimate, um, you know, the relative impact of cash versus food in various countries. Okay, so these are several papers. Each of these papers focuses on a specific country, and 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 in each of these papers, the authors are trying to find out whether the cash versus food, which one has a relatively greater impact on various outcomes. We're going to primarily be focusing on on calorie intake and food expenditure. Uh, sort of two primary because you know that's those who are the primary objectives of of in kind transfer to begin with. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk about the the other implications of social safety net uh, uh, you know, shortly, and and that is going to be the, the final topic on which I'll spend uh, a bulk of the time. Uh, but for now, let's let's focus on you know on 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 the metric of food consumption expenditure or generally food expenditure and 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 uh, calorie intake as as the sort of two outcomes uh, uh, against which we're going to measure the relative. Efficiency of, of, of in-kind transfer or food transfer versus cash transfer. Okay. So, in the figure you see, um, what they're plotting is uh, what the author is plotting here is is the relative impact of food rel uh, uh, relative to cash uh, on uh, 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 ex food expenditure. Okay, and and it's 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 in percentage points. And and each each uh, bar is for a different country. So you have Yemen, Cambodia, Mexico, Ecuador. Uh, you know you have two two versions of the Ecuador. Two studies. One is food versus versus cash. Another is food versus the voucher. And then in Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. In okay. And and this is reporting the the uh, the the effect of. Uh, Food on food expenditure minus the effect of uh, cash on my food expenditure. So it's food minus cash. Okay, uh, and 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 the negative value basically implies. Sorry, uh, uh, I I've said it wrong. It is cash. Uh, uh, cash. Uh, yeah, it's 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 food minus cash. Yeah, I said it right. So it's it's food minus cash. Uh, and the outcome is, is food expenditure. So a negative value implies that the cash transfer had a larger impact on food expenditure than uh, the, the food transfer. Okay? So, so it's not saying, for example, that the food transfer re results in reduction in food expenditure. Both treatment, food as well as cash, increases food expenditure. The question is which one increases more so that this is the relative comparison. So, so food treatment minus cash treatment is negative means that cash treatment uh, has a higher effect, meaning that a uh, uh, negative. So, for example, for Yemen, the, the cash transfer led to uh, or food transfer led to 12 percent, 12 percent, uh, uh, um, 12 percentage point lower uh, of increase in in food expenditure relative to the cash transfer okay. so so in in several countries so in yemen cambodia sri lanka and bangladesh uh, they find that uh, cash transfer tend to actually increase food expenditure notice that it's a it's a overall food expenditure it's not it's not looking at essential items like you know rice or, or, or lentils or wheat etc general food expenditure that tend to increase 
the exception being Ecuador uh, um, under under cash treatment than in the food. So if you get cash, you tend to spend more on food than you get than you get the equi sort of, of, of the food. Now these these are not necessarily all equivalent uh, treatments in the sense that the cash transfer and the food transfer were not always sort of of similar value in in all the treatments. You know these are several studies that are some are randomized control trials where they could control the the nature of the treatment. In others, it's sort of based on observational data. So 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 they're sort of they're roughly in the equal margin, but not exactly equal. Okay, so so you have to keep that. So, so, so the first point is that you know it looks like cash seems to increase food expenditure much more. This is interesting. This is saying that um, if you look at calories now per capita, so so instead of looking at food expenditure, if you look at calorie per capita intake, um, again in percentage points, you actually see positive effects for many. So, so in Sri Lanka, you see a small negative effect. That's that's not uh, statistically significant. So it's basically zero. Uh, and in Bangladesh, you see a negative effect. But the author here in this paper argues that you know that study was done in a specific point in time, uh, which sort of resulted in this negative effect. So it's sort of driven by the special circumstances, circumstances of the of the uh, of the context. But but generally, in other countries, in Yemen, Mexico, and Ecuador. You find positive effect uh, on, on uh, a relative positive gain for for the food treatment, meaning that it seems that even the food treatment tend to uh, uh, not increase food expenditure as much as cash cash treatment. It tend to increase uh, the calorie intake much more than the than the cash. Intake. So what it what this tells you is that maybe you know and and the authors also point this out is that maybe this in time transfer or the food transfer what this is doing is that it's delivering a lot of calorie much more cheaply right and that may be of, of importance because these kinds of programs tend to benefit the poorer sections of the society for whom how it you know its price of calorie may be important meaning that the food that you are you know buying how much calorie that gives you it, it may have implications because it, it, you know for poor people you know buying cheaper calories uh, means that they can buy a greater amount of calories so to speak which can have implications for productivity and, and income going forward and therefore you know it's, it's important to, to, to get this metric that how cheaply you can access calorie and it looks like uh, food transfers tend to give greater access to cheaper calories uh, than cash transfers. So you tend to buy more expensive stuff um, if you get cash uh, 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 as opposed to as opposed to if you get food transfers, which makes sense because most of the food transfers are basically cereals, food grains. So so they they contain a lot more calorie per per unit of money spent. And so, so, so that's sort of one issue, one sort of striking issue that comes. There. The the third issue in in within this cash versus in kind uh, um, debate is is this uh, uh, um, efficiency argument. Now, uh, you know, as you may expect. Cash delivering cash to people is a relatively inexpensive uh, exercise compared to delivering food. Okay, because you know for food you need this kind of procurement and transportation, procurement, storage, and transportation system. So it's a whole bureaucracy, right? Uh, uh, so so for example, uh, this table shows that uh, in in Mexico. Um, if you for every uh, dollar that you want to transfer via food, uh, it costs the government 2.29 dollars uh, to transfer that dollar, but it costs the government only 0.31 dollars to transfer a dollar via cash transfer. Okay, uh, because there is no such bureaucracy involved in delivering cash, not as much bureaucracy. I mean, you can do this uh, direct benefit uh, kind of a thing. 
but even if you are not doing it, if you are sort of delivering cash, you know, you can transfer money to the bank accounts of the local officials, you know, local bureaucrats who can in turn give out the money. So, so even you know, physical uh, delivery of cash is, is less expensive. And you and you see this pattern across the country. So in Niger, for example, it, it, it costs about a thirteen dollar uh, uh, to deliver a dollar of food, uh, whereas it costs only four dollars to deliver a dollar of cash. Okay, and same for Yemen. So, uh, um, so the this kind of uh, in terms of delivering, uh, you know, efficiency of delivery, it clearly cash cash wins. Um, which is sort of understood, but what about uh, um, uh, what about uh, uh, benefit in terms of impact on on calorie? You know, which which mode of transfer costs less to deliver a given nutrition level? Suppose you know that's that's what we are interested in. Which one costs less to deliver the same nutrition? Level? So there, you know, you, you sort of that sort of you know relates to the previous uh, graph in the previous slide. Uh, you know, you find you find in some countries it is indeed uh, either similar uh, 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 in terms of in terms of modality. So, for example, in Bangladesh, it costs about three dollar three dollar and twenty cents each uh, uh, on, on both modes uh, to deliver hundred kilocalories. Okay, so it's, it's similar. Or in case of Honduras, you know, you find Food is much more efficient. Actually, they find that you know the, the authors that studied the context of Honduras, they find that the the cash transfer actually didn't increase nutrition of children, whereas uh, food increase, did increase nutrition of children. So, so, so that sort of you know that's a large you know, that's a large increase because in one case you have a null effect. Uh, in Ecuador, you kind of find the other way. So, in Ecuador, you find that. Uh, to in, to increase calorie by fifteen percent, you need to spend ten dollars and seventy eight cents uh, if you use the food modality, but you need to spend about seven and a half dollars if you use uh, uh, if you use the cash modality. So cash you know, seems to be more, uh, seems to be more efficient even from a delivery point of view for Ecuador. So f you know, with respect to Ecuador, it looks like that you know. Uh, in terms of in terms of delivery efficiency, cash is much better. In terms of uh, uh, impact efficiency, also um, cash seems to uh, win against food. So, so in, at least in, in Ecuador, you can get us one ambiguous answer that uh, that uh, cash seems to cash seems to be better. Um, but but there is variation in terms of impact efficiency across countries. Different countries have different experiences, um, so so the the benefits may vary in those contexts. So so you know that's that's an important takeaway both both from this international comparisons as well as this this study by Dreze uh, Dreze and Khera that I highlighted to uh, um, uh, to you, and that you know these contexts are important when it comes to impact efficiency, and, and this is something that. Requires a gathering data and, and a careful analysis to understand which in which context do you think that a system like PDS is going to deliver um, much more calorie per per unit of money spent on, on transfer, okay. and 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 these and the details of delivery may matter. You know, whether are you giving the money to to the to the women of the household of the men of the household? Uh, are they uh, um, is the money accessible using? Uh, you know, do they need to use thumbprints to get the money? If that, uh, what is the error rate? You know, the people who do manual labor, their thumbprints are often uh, not recognizable by the machine. Uh, are they going to be systematically uh, uh, um, not uh, 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 systematically be be rejected from the system from accessing the cash transfer? If yes, you know what are the consequences of that in terms of uh, benefits of, of doing cash transfer with a income transfer? You know these are the details you have to keep in mind. Similarly, with respect to delivering the uh, the food via food distribution centers, you know what are the impacts on 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 uh, doing having a PDS on the quality of food grain that is consumed by by um, um, 
by the by the people. Uh, 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 is there a better way of delivering the food uh, uh, to the people uh, 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 than the current sort of PDA system that we have in India? So, so these details of implementation and context are going to be critical to, to understand impact efficiency, and 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 that's that's where I think people need to do a, a lot more work and be more careful while forming their opinion. Okay. And so, you know, we can discuss on Thursday, for example, you know, what what would work better for India. So, 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 so think about that question. Uh, let's move to uh, the next sort of uh, topic uh, within the social safety net. So here, um, the 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 other concern with so, uh, social safety net is that um, does it have an implication for the labor supply of of the of the people who are accessing the social safety net? What do I mean? So social safety net increases the real income of rural households, right? Either you deliver it via cash or you deliver it via subsidized food. You know their real income is going up. If their real income goes up, it may have you know since uh, leisure is valuable in the labor leisure choice. If you remember, if you have an income effect, it's going to increase leisure, right? It's going to reduce the labor supply. Now. Um, that in itself uh, uh, um, can be can be a study you know of, of interest to study and examine whether uh, poorer sections of the society now that they are getting benefits from the state are they going to be working less uh, in, you know in order to you know in order to sort of enjoy a bit more leisure uh, uh, and if this labor supply effect is strong enough. Uh, then it may have implications in turn in the market wage rate, right? Because if certain section, uh, you know, if, if certain section of the population withdraws from the labor market a little bit, if they now work less in the in the say in the agricultural labor market, then the agricultural lab labor's wage is going to go up, and that may have additional benefits for the poor, right? Because even though they are reducing the the labor supply a little bit, if wage goes up substantially in response. Then you know that can in, in turn boost the labor income, which is sort of a subsequent or, or downstream impact of the social safety net program, right? Uh, and and that this this is what we call the general equilibrium effect. What is general equilibrium? Because if, if you change one thing, so so you are changing, uh, you know, uh, income of of individuals, which in, which has an effect on individual labor supply, which an implication. On the market wage, so 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 because it's a it's you know this kind of income uh, from the government can have an impact on the market level uh, variable such a wage. So these are that's why it's called a general equilibrium because you know uh, prices are determined uh, at that, the market level. So so you have studied this model of general equilibrium, but there are multiple markets and, and impact in one can have implications in, on, on on the other price, right? So here. Uh, uh, you are impacting the income of the individuals, and it has implication on wage. So, so that's that's the sort of general. Equilibrium. And the question is, you know, is is this true? Is it the case that social safety nets uh, reduces labor supply and, and increases wage, and and thereby is it beneficial, even more beneficial for the poorer section of society by increase the wage income or the labor income of the of the. Uh, of the of those people receiving the, the benefit, social safety net benefit. Okay, so 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 that's that's the that's the uh, uh, question. So is there a way to test it? So so this this paper by Srinivasan, Bailey's and Prost in 2019, uh, they they do test it in the context of PDS in India. Uh, it's it's not an easy thing to test because you know the 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 value of the transfer via food via PDS. Is endogenous because it depends on how much I'm consuming and how much subsidy the state is choosing to give uh, 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 relative to market price. So, 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 so you know these things, you know these things uh, can be correlated with other aspects of the society. So, you know, if in states where a lot of people uh, need 
uh, food transfers may be the the subsidy is much larger per unit of uh, say rice or, or per kg of rice or, or per kg of wheat uh, and therefore in those areas uh, you see you know a greater uh, um, sort of a subsidy given to individuals and also in those areas you may find that people are working more so because they are much more poorer so so you know they are more compelled to work uh, longer hours uh, per month um, and so you may you may pack you may underestimate the effect because instead which gives you know, a lot of these uh, subsidies are also the states where people work more so if you sort of look cross sectionally then you may find a correlation that may be that may be driven by these other aspects of the society uh, which is different from the causal effect of food transfer on labor so 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 what what do these authors want to test these authors want to test whether uh, say the labor supply or wage received by individual i in household h in state s in a, in a particular time period t in their case they can look at monthly uh, monthly data on labor supply and wages from uh, from india uh, uh, from a data set called ikri set and they going to look at the same individuals over time uh, so it's a panel data so so you, you are tracking a set of individuals over every month uh, uh, and and finding Uh, uh collecting data on how much labor hours they have su- supplied in the market and how much wage they have gotten against against it and you want to you you want to find whether that is correlated with with uh the value of the transfer or the subsidy uh that you get from the state so so is the value of the transfer that household h gets from state as in time period okay the first point is that there is not much variation of this transfer over time because states don't change entitlements uh, every year these are generally kept fixed you know for example right now you get 5 kilo of wheat or rice per person uh, per month uh, uh, if you are if you are a below poverty line household with a ration card uh, um, at, at at some uh, you know very nominal price say 1 rupee per kg or 2 rupee per kg of the grain um and and these in, but this this is the entitlement that's going to stay until the state revises it at some point in time so 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 in 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 generally these 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 entitlements remain sort of fixed for a state over time okay so so that's the first issue there is not much variation over over time for a given state and second is is the endogeneity problem that i mentioned even for a given time across state variation uh, in in value of transfer could be correlated with Certain unobservable aspects about the transfer. Maybe you know the poor people are much more mobilized uh, politically in some states. So, so for the same set of poor people, you can see greater transfer in some states than in others, just because they are politically more mobilized, and their political mobilization may have implications on their labor hours. You know the amount of work that they are doing, and 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 therefore again you may find correlations between uh, uh, subsidy value transfer and and labor hours. that is driven by these other factors that are unobserved okay. so 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 this this uh, transfers across states uh, are are basically correlated with uh, unobservable factors that affect uh, the outcome okay. so uh, uh, um let me then stop here and in the in the next video uh, i'll talk about how we can get around this uh, endogeneity problem using an instrument